Rick has a 123 average. And a great start for Rick. His high single is 194. His high triple 459. And his roll off score that qualified him with, as you know, Tom was remarking about how difficult it is to get on. But there are no invitations here. You must earn your way on. And Rick LePage has begun with two consecutive strikes. You know that three strikes in a row is worth an additional bonus of $1,000. So that's what we'll be looking at when Rick comes up again. What a start by both of these bowlers. Wonderful. Now Tom Morgan. Let's see if he can get three marks in a row. He's got a great chance at it. He got eight for the fill. And he's looking now at six and nine with wood across the two pins. He's got it. Wonderful start. Three marks in a row for Tom Morgan. He leaves one, two, and ten. Seven is the bill. But there are two pieces of wood, one behind and one in front of the ten. Oh, a beauty, a beauty. Four marks in a row. Now Rick LePage comes up and he has two consecutive strikes. I shall say no more. Nope, it didn't happen. And it doesn't happen too often, obviously. He leaves four pins, two on the right and two on the left. So he's unable to make three marks in a row for some bonus money. It's an eight. Gets another tough split, almost like a spread eagle. It's sort of like a baby split. He leaves the three six and the two four. That takes care of the left side. It's a nine. First check on the scoreboard after four boxes of the first string. With a bonus ball still to be thrown by our challenger, Tom Morgan, he is leading right now in pins all in a row for our challenger, Tom Morgan, as he comes up to roll in the fifth frame of the first string. Oh, baby, is he hot. He has a nine drop. The single pin to pick up is the 10. He has wood rolling over, which... He doesn't want it because it's going to be perpendicular. In fact, he has two. One of them is right there. It's totally perpendicular, pointing right toward him. The other is rolling over to the left, now coming back a little bit. But there is one that is going to stay, apparently. And he must wait for the wood to settle down. So his target becomes rather small the very end of this piece of wood that's facing him. And he missed it. That was tough. As it turned out, it was a roadblock. He hit that piece of wood and it, uh, you, you must hit it, of course, right on the end and use it like a battering ram. And if you hit it on a slight angle, as he did, the ball goes into the gutter and the... Uh, piece of wood goes the other way and the 10 pin stays up right now he's looking at four horsemen left side plus the five and eight and he made it so he was open only in that fifth as you uh, who are regulars know here's Rick LePage up now only twice in the 32 and a half years of this program has a bowler had a mark in every box. Rosario Lechiara 
and Ed Zernike. The difference with Ed Zernike is that he also was able to add another as a fill to his strike in the tenth. Rick LePage right now looking at the two and four, excuse me, three and six. I gave you the mirror image, sorry. Okay, <laughs> he leaves the three. Tom Morgan with a super string going so far right now at 91 in the sixth and this to add to that. He adds six more, but he's left with seven, eight, and ten across the back, and the object pin is the five with wood around it. Got the five and seven. Nine and ten still there. This is uh, Tom's third regular appearance on our program, but he uh, qualified for and did extremely well in our championship show of 1983. In the first round, he defeated Hugh Ferguson. Now he's looking at the one and eight with wood in back of it. Made it. In the second round, he defeated Det Klein and then went on to the final round against top seed Tom Osta and uh, lost by 14. Rick LePage. A single pin to pick up. He has the nine pin all by itself and he's got it. Rick right now at 88. Plus this. Five is his spill. He's got the 10 pin alone over on the right. And over on the left, it's the two, four, seven, and eight. Waiting for wood to settle down. He got the left, but he was not able to uh, pick up the 10. There it is for a 10 box. 103 through eight. Right now, Tom Morgan, 116, plus what he gets on this ball. Add a strike, make that 126. And of course, 136 plus what he gets on the next two. Eight on the first. It's the two pin and the six pin. That's a tough one to make. There is some wood, but it's a little bit behind. No. All right. One fifty-three. Our defending champion, Rick LePage. Five, six, and ten. Oh, yes. Nice shot. Everything down except the four pin. Oh, 
too bad. He held it just a fraction too long. And as a result, his arm had swung too far to the left. And he missed it on the left side. But he picks it up for the 10. And a fine 132 string. But it's also a 21 ad pin advantage for the challenger, Tom Morgan. 153 to 132. Defending champion leads it off. Here's Rick LePage of East Boston. Almost a beautiful start. Left only one pin, the six pin. There's some wood that's rolling around a little bit. Yes, he has it. Don Riley is acting uh, as our lob line judge and referee today. Six is the fill. Three, six, ten on the right, seven pin on the left. Two full on the three pin. Ralph Stewart, our lob line judge and referee ordinarily, is... Uh, brushing up on his suntan so he'll look beautiful when he comes back. He's down to Aruba. It's a nine. So our statistician today filling in for Don Riley is Tim Michelle. Tom Morgan. Tom has a strike to begin the middle string. Is he going to? No. One pin stays up. The eight pin. If he can avoid that piece of wood. No, it was a roadblock. That was the danger. Don Riley calls time. He's got to get the loose ball. The rest of our crew today. Al Giglio is keeping score on the electronic scoreboard and Keith Williams keeping score on the big board for the folks who are here. It's a 10. Phil Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. And we went to great expense again today to get some of our veteran and experienced technicians. Two pins remaining, the 9 and 10 for Rick LePage. Will he be able to get it? Yes, he did. Joe Sukar, Jeff Sullivan, Chris O'Hare, and Howie Rouse. Names immortal in the channels of, <laughs> in the Channel 5 archives. <laughs> Five is the fill. It's one, two, three, five, and eight. No. A 10. And as always, in post-production videotape, Doug DeVitt. Tom Morgan. He has a triangle over on the right. Yep. Somebody in the background just said it. Another tricky triangle. And that's why so often the bowler will get one or two, but not three. It's a nine box. Next week's challenger is another veteran candlepin bowler, Bill Trefel of Norfolk. This will not be easy. He has no wood to help. He has four horsemen left side and the nine pin. One, two, four, seven, and nine. Two full on the head pin.
so many times the bowler will hit the, the one three pocket and we'll get the four horsemen however the ball will go one way and the number one pin the other all right another check on the scoreboard as you know after one it was tom morgan 153 and rick lepage one our defending champion rick lepage east boston very close to a strike he left the five and the nine he has it so he's been alternating boxes spare nine spare ten spare again eight is the fill he has wood just to the left of the six pin and he has the seven pin he will be trying to move the wood over to get the seven and have the ball take the six hit yes it works nice there you see how it's done now our challenger tom morgan Tom is looking at five, seven, and nine. Five and nine have wood just to the right side of it. The seven alone, he'll try to push everything over to the left to get that seven. Let's see if he can do it. Oh, he left the nine pin. Well, I have a chance. Uh, I want to congratulate the 1991 Bowlers of the Year in the World Candlepin Bowling Congress. Janet Pock of Concord, New Hampshire, and Tim Lipke of Londonderry, New Hampshire. Another tough split for Tom. The four and the ten. Also, I'd like to compliment the winners of the last two Pro Tour stops. Janet Pock and Dick O'Connell. That was the one that was held at the Millis Bowl and uh, Janet Park and Jack Sanek. And these bowlers were honored at the Pro Tours Annual Awards Banquet, which was held last Saturday evening at the uh, Native Gelks Hall. And congratulations to all of them. It's a seven box, not what he wanted. A reminder again that the Massachusetts Bowling Association's state tournament is underway and the 100% handicap tournament is a part of it. The tournament will cover 11 weekends, concludes May 18th, and the winners will be invited to the annual awards night dinner on June 6th. Nice shot. Beautiful spare. That 100% handicap tournament, as you know, permits all bowlers, regardless of average, to compete on an even ground. Thousands of entries have already been received by the 34 host centers in the area. Tom Morgan has a spare lead. He has five and nine with Wood. Pilgrim Lanes of Haverhill will host the open events of the state tournament. Five of the seven being decided right here on Channel 5. Oh, too bad. He tried to utilize the wood and uh, the five. And the wood went under there, but the five and nine are still standing. It's a nine box. The youth events of the state tournament with nearly 2,000 entries expected will be held again this year at Timberlanes in Abington. He has just the seven pin to pick up for a spare. Boys and girls from the midget class through high school compete in the singles, doubles, and team events, and entries are still being accepted for some of the events. You see your local proprietor. Find out more. Is he going to make the spare? He does. One more thing. If you want more information, call the MBA's managing director, Bill Bolton. His telephone number is area code 617-933-4622. Okay. Here is Rick LePage, and he is working on a spare and gets 
A fill of five and a tough spare lead. Four horsemen left side and the nine pin. Rarely made. He tried, but he left number one. So it's a ten. He's at one sixteen going into the tenth box. It's going to be close at the end of two. He has the seven pin alone over on the left. Over on the right, he has the three and the six. There is a piece of wood behind the six and just to the left of the three. Can he utilize it? Oh, he had to hit the three. And he didn't. He got the six out of there. It's a 10, so a 126. Now let's see what Tom Morgan does. Tom at 84 in the eighth, plus this. Thin hit, just four. Two, four, seven, and eight, three and 10. Ooh, right down the middle, not getting anything. It's a nine. Ninety-seven. Just two pins separating our bowlers right now. He's opposite a ten. Can he mark? Well, if he does, it won't be easy. It's pretty well set up on the left with the two, four, and seven, and wood between the two and four, but he also has to get the ten, and there's nothing in front of it. Can he do it? Oh, he get it, gave it a good effort, but the 10 is still there. So he will do 107 or one, uh, yes, he did 107. And take a look at this one if you want to see how close it is at the end of two. Two pins, Tom Morgan still in the lead, 260 to 258. Tom Morgan, our challenger, leading by a slender two pins. And he begins the third with a strike. Among those who are here rooting for Tom are his brother Mike. He has two strikes in a row. As I started to say, his brother, another excellent Candleton bowler, has been many times on our program, Mike Morgan, and another of our former champions, Al Lacey, here rooting for Tom. Now our defending champion, Rick LePage. Let's see what he does. He has had two strikes thrown at him. Right now looking at three, six, ten. They're gone. Missed the head pin to the right. He wound up with five. He's looking at one, two, and then in the back he's got the eight, six, and nine. Si excuse me, six and ten. And they're still standing. Unfortunately for Rick, he left four pins standing. It's a six box. And the fill was only five, so the bonus basically amounts to just one pin. He got 21 for the two boxes. Yeah. Tom Morgan going for three strikes in a row, misses by one. We've seen that so many times where a bowler will get two strikes in a row and then going for the third will have a drop of nine. He has three marks in a row. 
and another $50 in bonus money. Tufo on the head pin. Spread eagle. A fill of four and three pins on the left, three pins on the right. He took out six and ten. This time he took out two and four. So it's an eight box. Now our defending champion, Rick LePage of East Boston. He's got the old Woolworth split, the, the five and ten. Oh, just missed it. Rick is a uh, married father of three and grandfather of one. He's employed as a warehouseman, representing the Melrose Bolodrome and the Central Park Lanes in East Boston. That one missed the head pin. He got six pins to drop. He's looking right now at standing one, two, four, and ten. And two pieces of wood are tucked in behind those three standing pins. So this could go if he hits it right. Too bad. He got a piece of wood to brush against the ten pin, but it wouldn't go. And he just missed it as a single. Tom Morgan, as you know, was uh, remarried recently. He is uh, the father of two from his previous marriage. And he is employed as a machinist, representing, as he has, I guess, all his bowling life, the post office lanes in Lynn. And he makes a spare. At the conclusion of the program, we had a home viewer winner last week, so that jackpot will start at $50 with not too many cards compared to what it is sometimes. Oh, too bad as he punches out on the right side. Half Worcester right taking out just the three and the nine. He almost came back. He got uh, everything except Five and the six. Now get the five out of there. The post office lanes in Lynn is uh, home territory for Tom Morgan and for many, many of our previous champions. Rick LePage, a little too full that time, and uh, as a result, he leaves the four seven over on the left, the three six ten on the right. That takes care of the right side. Done in classic style with a hit between the three and six pocket. He leaves the seven pin. So it's another nine. He began with a spare and so far has had spare five, then six, eight, and double nine. Nine and nine. And with the four marks opposite him by his challenger, he finds himself where he had been trailing by two, now trailing by 38. And where he really wants marks, he is not getting them. He's going to be open again. And this is a seven. Tom Morgan with four boxes to go. Up by 40 pins. He has a single pin to pick up. It's the five, and he has favorable wood right in front of it. There it is.
He left the diamond on the left side or the bucket, whichever you want to call it. Nope, another win for the diamond. It's an eight. Rick LePage down to four boxes where he would uh, obviously love to explode. Not that way. He has left four horsemen right side, also the five and nine. And now he punches out three and nine. So he still has one, five, six, and ten. He got a break as two more have tumbled, and it's a nine box. But he drops seven more pins. Very close to a strike, he left one. It's the four pin. He went for the wood in front of it, went too far to the left, spun the wood out of there with the ball and left the four pin. Now he's right at it. Now Tom Morgan, his final two boxes. He has the 10 pin to pick up for another mark. And yes, he's all over it. Seven is the fill. All the standing pins are in the back. Seven, eight, ten. But there are four pieces of wood in front of the three on the left. He went to the right, hoping that he could kick a piece of wood over into the three pieces, which are in front of the others. It didn't go. But he finishes with a fine 143. And so we have a new champion who will be facing the challenge of a former champion, Bill Trefoe, uh, next week. Now we'll see what the final score will be. Nope. Rick unable to convert that. It's the five and the eight. A ten and ninety two. Now Rick LePage comes up and congratulates Tom Morgan. So Tom Morgan, as he made the comment earlier uh, that uh, he had been doing for the last seven years or almost eight years is trying to get back on this program and we do know how difficult it is uh, finally did win a roll-off and uh, it was a sensational roll-off score as you know it's five strings which they use to qualify and he rolled a 700 so he came back on again and uh, was able to not just win but roll that uh, excellent 143 in the third string and that put him over 400 so he picked up an extra $100 for a 400 of course that our championship show one time and went all the way to the final against Tom Osta who was the top seed keep doing that maybe till it builds up a whole bunch but this is a pretty good score at 753 this might be a winner I gotta move that in there now some, I know what somebody's saying somebody's saying right now why doesn't he take that one because it's right on top 
But then all the other folks would say, no, 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 that's not fair. Okay, let's find out. <laughs> let's try again. Last time, and if they stick again this time, I'm going to grab one, all right? Here we go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, this card is from Dorchester, Massachusetts, 551 Adams Street Rear. The name is Earl A. Smith. As I told you, the total today is 753. And Earl's guess is 753. Yeah! How about that? Beautiful, right on the nose, and a good reward. Okay, we also try to give away some money. Uh, let's see. Hilo jackpot is worth $450. Tommy, nobody wants this. I don't know why, but you, you'll take it? Okay. <laughs> okay, Ricky. Still there. Okay, Rick and Tom. Rick. You know that uh, the, the way this works, you get one big trophy, and you eventually get one small one. That's but right. a, lot, a lot of people like to have some in between, though. Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> well, listen, it was, uh, it was worth it all, wasn't it? And, and, uh, $350 in, uh, plus $50 in bonus money, and uh, a good gallery to root you on, huh? Well, I'll, I'll see you next year, okay? Thanks, All right. And Tommy, uh, it's been a long time, but you get the big trophy from the Ace Trophy, and you get all the money today, $250 in bonus money, plus an extra $100 for going over $400. And as a reward for that, we'll give you a nice easy one next week with Bill Treacle. Oh, no, that won't be easy enough. <laughs> okay, Don Gillis, the whole crew. Bye-bye. See you next week.